Okay, Lady Anna, what is this? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. We're back on brand with one half hour long show and tells. We did one hour. A lot of people were at home working on projects in their basements or in their homes. And uh, now things are kind of getting back a little bit kind of sort of normal. So we're going to be sort of kind of back to sort of little normal half an hour show. Yeah. The well, here, here's the other thing. Um, we're just straight up out of time. Yeah. Um, running one hour is a lot. Yeah, we, we did it as long as we could for six months, an hour long show and tell. Um, so please uh, place an order if uh, you want to <laughs> see us g keep going. Um, it's just like running a company in the middle of a pandemic. And what was that like? All the shows that we're doing and all the other things to keep keep going. Um, that Believe it or not, the extra half an hour um, helps us. So that's why we're moving show and tell back to 7.30 um, to 8 o'clock. So, okay. That being said, um, we're gonna get right into it with yeah. Kevin from DigiKey. Hey guys, how you doing? It's good you to see you. Awesome our, our, our colder, bigger, older version of Adafruit DigiKey. And I like your wall. You redid it. And I'm saying colder because pretty soon you're gonna be. I used to live in Minnesota. It's almost Minnesota winter time. Hey, yeah, we had frost the other day. It was yeah. not fun. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, my new home office. I've spent some time redoing it. It's not done. You can see there's no trim on the door in the corner there, but we're, we're getting there. I yeah, got the back, the, the wall painted, and it's it's a lot of fun. Awesome. So I know we only have a half hour, and I still wonder how many hours there are in a film in the more day. It's something I've always wondered because it's got to be more than 24. Exactly. It's actually a negative number. It's exactly two hours less than we yeah. need. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I worked on this week, it was the first day of school for – uh, the schools here in Thief River Falls, and the elementary students are going full time for now. We'll see where that goes. But my son's class had our name tag every day, so I asked his teacher, like, can I make my own name tag for him? And I worked with him on Make Code or Make Code Arcade, mm -hmm. and I created a name tag on the page. See if I can get that to focus. Oh, it's not focused. Get really close. Sometimes, if it's really close, it's more visible. There. there you go. Hello, Hello it's Mike. James. James J W. J S W. Okay. Yeah, I saw uh, when you tilted it a little bit. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So I I played with this with him and watching him try to write his name in the the program there was a lot of fun. Awesome. So I mean, that's just something that I worked on this week and then I've also been working on my office, trying to make it a little more homey and more digikey, and I've I've been enjoying that project. And I was going to show some pictures of our, we're building a claw machine for events if they ever happen again. Yeah. And I was going to show some pictures, but I'm having some computer issues sharing my screen. So you don't, we'll just you don't want to share your screen. Maybe come back next week and you'll share the photos. Yeah, I can definitely do that. I, I definitely will. I'll show some, share some photos of our claw machine build. And hopefully I'll have some more done on the, the big clue back here to show you guys. Oh, good. Next time we'll practice if you need to get the – it's always difficult to get it going. Yeah, it's really not – your guys, it's not even on stream yard. It was just on my end. And I know what I did yeah. wrong, but I just don't have time to fix that. Okay. That's all good. We've got all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, well, if I had to fill in the more day, I'd have my <laughs> – Yeah, <laughs> you don't want one of those days. Um, all right. Okay, well, we'll keep, we'll keep checking in with you. So we'll see you next week, 7.30 p.m. Yeah. Eastern time. Right. Sounds good. You guys take care. Right. Stay warm. Stay safe and stay warm. Yeah, we'll do yeah. it again. You guys in the United States, we keep the hot side hot and the cold side cold. <laughs> I know. I speak, know who's going to remember speaking that. Speaking of escaping the hot, you want to go to Melissa? <laughs> yeah. So, Melissa, you um, you drove eastward to escape some of the smoke, right? Yeah, like 1,400 miles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm out of the smoke now. And uh, as you can see, my background's a little different here than normal. Yeah. And uh, that's because I was working on a little uh, air quality index project and maybe kind of face how bad it actually was and I started to develop a cough and stuff. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, to my project. Yeah. So I have. Bring the pixels. I have pixels. And I don't have, I'm not sure where my little. Uh, LED plastic is at the moment, so I It's like readable. Okay. Okay. 
So this is uh, using the uh, pixel frame buff library, and this is, uh, I optimized it a little today, so now it's only changing the, or lighting up the pixels that have changed rather than going through and lighting everything. Mm. And so I got about twice the speed for doing text that way. So Nice. All right, that could come in handy for Kevin's gigantic NeoPixel Clue display. Yeah. Looks great. This is perfect because we've had, we've done a couple projects with these NeoPixel flexible, you know, wearable projects, but they've always right. been an Arduino because that's what we have the code in now. We have it in CircuitPython. Yep, CircuitPython. All right, good news. Phil B, you don't have to do this project anymore. You can take it off your list. All right, Melissa, well, congratulations on reaching a... Uh, a clean area. <laughs> Thanks. You have a lot of AQI projects coming up, so everybody's uh, everybody's definitely thinking about that. All right, mm -hmm. it's, it's good to hear that you're safe. Thanks. All right, let's go back. Trying to multitask here. Sorry, everybody. No, it's all good. Okay, next up, Noam Pedro. Hey, what's up? Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just me today. Pedro's walking the dog. Okay. I got this today, though. This is the collab project with Liz Clark. Um, last week, she kind of showed you it on a breadboard. Uh, so I put together this uh, milled uh, pieces of acrylic and some milled wood. And it's it's a nice little MIDI player. Can I play it for you? Good play away. OK, let's see what we got. I can hear the dog to <laughs> It's the background. It's great. The dog's like, what's going on? Why yeah. Are yeah. These silver things here are um, vinyl cut decals. So I got mm. those going on that look really nice. Um, it's got the Feather uh, M4 right now. But what we plan to do is to have a little back panel there and add this guy. So this is the new MIDI Featherwing hot out of the oven. Yes, and right. it's, it's sitting on this doubler so that we can have the Feather uh, M4 spread out here. So I'll have this in the back there so folks can have their Euro stack, uh, their Euro racks um, working on this. I love this because we've I've seen so many people try to do, um, you know, MIDI controllers or control boxes, and they're always just so incredibly complicated and the code is just like unmaintainable. Having come with CircuitPython means you can then go back in, edit the code, change how you want it to work. You can like load patches with Python, which is sweet. Uh, exactly. It's been fun, like playing even with just like your regular DAW. It doesn't have to be a your rack. I'm playing um, just some patches in Logic, and I kind of just got it too. So it's been fun uh, playing all the different synths and patches. All right, sweet. Thank you, now, Pedro. Yeah, all right, sure. next, sorry, just no. I I'm. It's fine. You can say it, no, Pedro. He's, he's there. He's, he's there. In spirit. The, the label spirit. has it. Then. I know. I see NP. I was like, no, no, no. You got it. All right, bye, folks. Okay, thanks. All right, let's go to JP. Hi, JP. Yeah, this is our this is our new reality. This is our new reality uh, out here in California. The mask is for COVID. It's actually for something different. That's right. These are no good for COVID. I keep uh, hearing that they vent out whatever you're breathing out, so it's that that's not going to help yeah. hear you. But boy, I've I have uh, seriously been wearing this outside on some days uh, because it's just so the air is just so smoky. You can kind of feel your lungs filling up. So. Um, that's a bit of a help also just staying inside the house where there's a lot of filtration. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that Melissa was talking about was working on a, um, air quality index project. So I have a, uh, little Metro M4 airlift here. I'm going to plug this in and, uh, it's driving a, uh, matrix display here that's going to connect up to the purple air uh, map. So purple air is sort of a home uh, uh, no sort of source air quality. <laughs> that's, not, that's not good. This is not me. So for dramatic effect, this is uh, okay. in Fresno where it's really bad. Uh, so oh no, but this is still oh, so only like a hundred miles this, from you. This is still this is still where humans are. Yeah, there are humans there. Okay, this ain't great. This is still bad news. <laughs> it's bad news. It's about right, now. You make bad news machines. It's been around 100-ish today. It's been higher some days, 160 even here. Um, and the way this works is that the purple air nodes that people can buy and kind of put up anywhere, they all end up on a map if you make them public. Um, I think they have an ESP32 in them, so they, they jump on a Wi-Fi. 
And uh, you can look at a map on Purple Air, pick a node, and it'll give you more details, including the node ID. That node ID can be part of a URL that you can use to request a JSON um, uh, data package that gives you things like the phrase uh, ID number, the air quality index number, and a bunch of other stuff, I think humidity and temperature in there as well as other things. Um, so this is some code that Melissa put together uh, and it uh, you could probably get more advanced, like show a couple different sensors, especially if you have like an indoor and an outdoor. And that's something I found interesting is looking at uh, some, you can zoom in to the point where you're like, okay, that node is clearly someone owns both an indoor and an outdoor one and they don't live very far from me. So I'm just gonna use that. I don't need to average stuff. I can just use theirs. Um, and the, you know, the indoor will vary wildly depending on your house, but we've noticed that the filtration in our house, the house is sealed up fairly well, newish windows, uh, brings the levels down to where you're not smelling smoke generally with the doors closed, which is great. Um, so not something I ever paid much attention to, uh, and I should have, because it gets smoky in California pretty much every fall, end of summer. Um, but this is gonna help, uh, help us keep an eye on things, especially when I put our actual uh, local node on here. Yeah, Hi. Uh, a little bit over there. So I'm gonna just end on. Um, I think you're gonna echo JP. Um, oh no, that's all right. Um, all right, well we'll see you on your shows tomorrow. Yes, I'll see you all tomorrow. We'll talk about this in more detail. Bye bye. Okay, stay safe. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's got their own life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's too uh, cold. It's too hot. It's too smoky. Yeah, it's too cold. For, for the kids out there, you got a lot of engineering challenges ahead. Um, won't be boring. A lot of projects. All right, Colin, take it away. Hey, yeah, well, um, in case you've been living under a rock, and if you have, let me know if there are any other free rocks that I can use. Um, there is an election coming up, you probably heard. And yeah. you know, you normally get like the sticker, I voted or whatever, when you walk out of the election, and that's great, and you should show people and let them know today's the day, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, we need to kick it up a few hundred notches this time around, so, um, adding electronics into the mix. So, so, so we need we need something before to let people know that you are going to vote. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you may have guessed, you're about to see one possible solution. So this is the, this is, it's, a, it's actually a Feather M0 Express with uh, the OLED feather wing on top. There's nice compact short headers, which I've really come to love. A little LiPo inside and a pin back. And so it will say electronically, I vote, and of course, people always pay more attention to something that's on a screen. We all know that, so that's much more effective than a sticker nowadays. But of course, it is feature complete with the ability to turn it into post voting mode. I voted. Yeah. Yes, it, it does work. And of course, if you want to kick it up that extra notch, you ask the question, did you? <laughs> there you go. So that's pretty much all you could possibly need in a uh, voting flare, I think. If there's any addition, please. for 52 days. Please. Oh, yeah, it's it's for, gonna be yeah. running for a while. I think it's like 49 days. days. 49 days, I'm good for 49. 49, it keeps going down as much. Yeah, you can also make a countdown timer and more. Yeah. And then just um, just so everybody on, there. Um, on our platforms hear this, it's probably not gonna be voting day, it'll probably be like voting week, voting month. So just get used to the idea. <laughs> because That's an important because thing to keep in mind. Yeah, that we all need to like, hey, you know, whatever newscasters want to say that day doesn't really matter. There's a lot of things that happen after a vote. So right, they're going to we'll, be really, we'll really dying to say something decisive, and it's not going to be there. Yeah, and check out adafruit.com slash vote because we have many resources, including ones that our team put together. Um, and thank you, everyone, who's volunteered to be a poll worker after seeing our resources. We're going to need it. That's right. All right, thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Okay, next up, Wonder Woman. Hello. Uh, we could use some truth lasso. Absolutely, we are hoping Wonder Woman is going to swoop in and just save us all, but that hasn't happened yet. And unfortunately, they even announced that the new Wonder Woman movie, which was all I was all excited about, it was supposed to launch October 2nd. It's not launching until Christmas. Yep. So we have a little more time, I guess, to complete my fantastic Wonder Woman. The second project. month of the election, as yeah. we like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder Woman for president. Um, Anyway, uh, what I'm working on this week is a uh, neon sign, obviously, um, and this one's Wonder Woman themed because I love Wonder Woman, and we need a little more wonder in our lives. Um, this is intent. This is just a prototype. I haven't gotten the layout completely done yet, but I'm playing around with this neon. It's the first time I've 
use it. It's a lot of fun. Um, basically, you just plug it in. Uh, you, you put a little connector on the end and plug it in. So there's no microcontrollers, there's no soldering, anything like that. Um, the whole artistry is how you decide to lay it out and play with it. Um, and so I'm going to write up a tutorial about how I'm getting it uh, attached to this back ground. It's like a super lightweight, it's really mobile and easy to do. Um, well, and it falls over. It's so light, it falls yeah. over. <laughs> That's a good, a good sign because it's not permanent, you can move it around. You can store it. Absolutely. And um, the idea behind it is you know, if you want to put it up in your business or your teenager's room or whatever, um, so that people can stand in front of it and take selfies. Um, I'm going to see, you know, play with ideas about how to get lettering and that kind of thing done fairly simply and easily so that people will take a selfie at your place of employment when we're allowed to go out again. Um, and then post them on their social media and you'll get your free marketing and that kind of thing. Um, people love selfies, so yeah, that's, I think this is going to be like the home gym trend because a lot of the like Instagram hangout places they're unless they're attached to a museum right now, like in New York, they're not opening quite yet. So I think the homemade selfie walls for birthdays, events, for families and more. I think that's going to be something people do. Okay, cool. Thank you, Aaron. Absolutely. Oop, oop. Oh, and I comment that what what is it? It's actually it's actually NeoPixel Neon. It just comes in a tube. Um, like so, and uh, you just plug it in. So it's NeoPixels inside, but it, it's super flexible and it yeah. looks just like neon or neon wire. It looks so. just like neon. All right, sweet. Right on. More pixels for Aaron. All right, next up, paint your dragon. Hello there. Bob, we're, we're on a, a LED matrix uh, bender. Yes, um, always, pretty much for the last. Uh, um, oh, wrong camera. Let's try this camera. See what we got. We should have an overhead view. There it is. Yes, I am working on a clock. Yet another clock, but this one's special. Though we got the usual time and date here. But uh, going on up here, we have the current moon phase, and it's a it's a new moon right now, so it's it's not lit up. But if I come back in a week, we'll have a first quarter moon there, like an actual picture of it. Come back in two weeks, we'll have a full moon. Um, and this is uh, what time the moon will set. And what's important about this is this is for my location and time because that's something like th there's wall calendars that show you the phases of the moon and it's like half the time those are going to be wrong plus or minus one day yeah. because we have time zones and you know there's a lot of variables involved and so uh, i wanted something that like actually represents the state of the moon for a user's actual location and local time zone so that's what i got going on and I'm just writing up the guide now. Yay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Colby. For all those werewolves out there, you'll you'll yeah. know exactly yeah. when it's werewolf time. All right. Thanks, Philby. Next all right. Up, Scott, Scott, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in like a couple days. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, I'm going to hit, I think, a couple of the previous projects that we had. Uh, I'm up in Seattle, and it, the air quality has been really bad from the fires as well. And I went and visited my family, my sister's daughter, my niece turned one over the weekend. And I was like, I'd really love to have a portable air quality sensor because I'm curious about like how different it is from outside to inside. So um, I had gotten one of the PMS sensors uh, a couple of years back knowing that this happens from time to time. So in under an hour, I managed to breadboard this and it's just a very simple circuit python script that mm -hmm. is reading the sig reading the sensor and then just printing out to the display so all for the display i just actually just got it displaying something and then blink is up there cuz i'm actually just uh printing it out um and you can see inside here it's about 19 or 20 yeah. um i went outside earlier and it was uh like 80 although the the purple air now thing says 186 so uh, it's been pretty bad. I saw over 200 yesterday outside. Um, so it's definitely uh, time to hang out inside. Yep. Uh, All right. Um, well, 2020, uh, the year of inside. <laughs> yeah, it's even more inside than it was. Yeah. Okay. On, on an unrelated note, because I haven't got a chance to catch up with you, the new camera looks great. <laughs> I agree. It's yeah, really right? good. And when you hold up things, it, it focuses really fast. So it has a product showcase mode. Yeah. Designed cool. for this. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's funny, because it's such a common thing, people holding up stuff. Yeah, and then if I, I put it on a button, so this is actually like eye tracking, so yeah. it should be really good for my eyes. It still does this reasonably well. 
Yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's Most of our products have an eyeball mode. You can just. Use and the yeah. oval looks nice. It has it. It has a nice refresh on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I'm super happy with it. My family was impressed. I was like, oh yeah, I just threw this together. They found it amusing to see Good how stuff. the values changed. Yeah, I mean, this it reminds me a little bit of um, when there was the nuclear disaster in Japan. A lot of people had to make their own Geiger counters. They started sharing yeah. that information. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Yes, we do have things like Purple Air, and we have public data that people can get, and we also have all the sensors, so you can kind of compare right. and say. It used to be a very like exotic, like "Ooh, you have an air quality sensor," but now I, yeah. it's going to be common. Everyone's going to have one. Yeah. So the, have one outside their home. I think the Purple Air sensors actually have two of these in them. Uh, there's yeah. just the more post-processing than what we get. Out yeah, of the 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 air quality sensors is the one, the blue one that you have. That's from uh, uh, Pantronics or something, or something or, like that. Plantronics. It's the reason we picked that one. It's in. It's the one that is used in many air quality sensors. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a well-established, high quality, but not too inex too expensive uh, air quality sensor, and it's reliable. It's not going to be as good as the five hundred dollar ones, but for like forty bucks, it's great. Oh yeah, I mean, it, just to know, like, we we drove over there, right? And like, what is the right air setting so that you're not sucking in new air, right? Like, yeah. when are you recirculating and you're actually filtering the stuff out? Um, that was really helpful. All right, okay. cool. And if you don't mind, can you post a link um, in YouTube show and tell about the? I think it's the Sony camera that you have. Yeah, it's a ZV one, and I'll. Yeah. I'll do a link to it. All right, cool, Michael and Kasten. Uh, Scott's going to put ZV1. that on. All right. I think so. All right, we're going to go to Jepler, and then we're going to wrap up with Liz. As long as we keep it to normal couple minutes each, we'll be able to get to everybody right on time. Jepler, how are you? Your camera looks good, too. Oh, you're, you. But you're on mute. Too. Man, I'm uh, using up my time budget. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I came with a mess of wires and said, I don't know what CAN bus is, but I hope to write some software. And now I'm back to say I've got some working software. So these are a uh, development board from Microchip with the SAM E54. The E54 and E51 have CAN bus, while the uh, D51 doesn't. So anyway, what this demo does is this is the sender board, which is hooked up to this OLED. This is the receiver board hooked up here, and we've got the two CAN bus wires uh, coming between them. So when I press the buttons here, it appears on the receiver. Ooh. And that's uh, basically what you can do now. So, um, you know, in theory, you can hook this up and now listen on a CAN bus to what's going on. You can inject things on the CAN bus. And we've got more to do, you know, before it's ready to go in, but uh, we've got a really solid foundation. foundation here on the SAM e microcontrollers. Awesome. Okay, I think people are going to be looking forward to that, and we will have some more can capable microcontrollers coming up. Yep. So I've heard. Very exciting. Very exciting. So you've heard. All right. Next yeah, up, so. Liz. See you next week. And Liz. Liz hello. and Liz's overhead or desktop. All right. You got the monolith portable that Apple released this week. Yeah, it's going on there. Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, so really quick, uh, it's the party parrot, but this time connected to Twitter. Uh, so if you tweet yeah. at me with the hashtag party parrot, then we get a party going. And I have a comrade that's supposed to be tweeting at me uh, <laughs> coming in in a second because it just changed to yellow. So it's checking for tweets. It didn't get anything. Like uh, hashtag party parrot? Yeah. Yes. Hashtag. Yes. Go um, for it. So. Oh, I'm going to tweet too. Let's see. <laughs> live this is, party demo. The, there's a lot of live demo. Yeah, a lot of things could go wrong. <laughs> this is the um, new Apple Watch. Yes. <laughs> the biggest screen. Yeah, everyone, everyone is just like, where's the party variant? <laughs> right. There we go. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so it'll, it'll party. Um, and then uh, yeah. when it stops, I also have a little um, kind of uh, uh, Easter egg in the serial monitor that says party over. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so. 
That's all right. Cool. Well, everyone, so this uh, worked. Tweet at Liz yes. and uh, <laughs> party over her way. Yes. Awesome. Safe distance nice party. <laughs> all right. Thank, well, thanks for showing this off because this is like one of the things that people want to do with hardware and um, things like Twitter. Yeah. Which always aren't so fun, but when you bring this in, that's kind of a neat thing where it's like, oh, neat. Like there's there's something someone can do. They can learn the software part, um, do things like Circuit Python, display things, be able to glue all this stuff together. That's normally hard. Yes, um, yeah, we have we have support code. I mean, getting Twitter tweets is actually really easy. You use the official API, and like you get a key, and and it all handles it on its own. You're not depending. You know, previously we'd been depending on a third party, but it's like if that goes away because they're constantly going away. Yeah. Um, but with this way, you're talking directly to Twitter, so you get you can get a fire hose of party parrot. Yes, and they just updated the API, so you have even more options you can pull with the URL, which is nice. Okay, cool. All right, All thank right, you, Liz. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, that is our show and tell for this week. We finished right on, on time. time and on budget. So seven thirty, we'll be doing these um, just like we always have, um, except we're just doing it from seven thirty to eight because it's been about six months of doing the one hour show. We need the half an hour back going forward to keep things going. Please check out adafruit.com and place an order. That helps us the most. So we can keep doing shows like this. Ask an engineer starts in two and two, two minutes. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.